Hi, Bobby. Hey, Kai. How are you, man? Just fine, thank you. And we're honored to have you in the show. And how's things going there in the States right now? Uh, it's a pleasure to be on your show. And um, things things are still a little crazy. It seems like it's starting to open up a little. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. that One day they say everything's good. Then they say it's getting bad again. So I, I don't know. Yeah. It is crazy like it times, is. crazy times. You know, Bobby, when you are, you are and I spoke last time, we we discussed, you know, the curiosity, how the story, how you you got into the famous hard rock group Rainbow. So could you please tell us about it a little bit? Oh, that was crazy. Um, a friend of mine, a recording engineer named Al Falcon. Um, had a friend that was friends with Richie Blackmore. And, 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 and the guy told Al that um, Cozy was leaving the band soon. And my friend Al says to the guy, well, why don't you get Bobby an audition? And, and the guy says, well, what's in it for me? So my friend, who was a nice guy, says, I'll give you 30 hours free studio time if you get Bobby an audition. He doesn't even have to get the gig. If you get him an audition, I'll give you 30 hours studio time, which is a very nice thing of my friend, right? Yeah. So I'm waiting to hear something. I don't hear anything. Um, I was in a, a, a local band called Samantha. Okay. And somebody stole our equipment truck. Everything. PA, drums, guitars, everything. And... um Twisted Sister and Zebra, you know, uh, they were two very big New York bands. Yeah. And they did a benefit concert for us to make some money to buy equipment. Wow. And at the sound check, the old drummer from Twisted Sister, Tony Petri, asked me to show him some lick that I do on the on the drums. Yeah. So I show him, but I don't know. There's a friend of Richie's there, right? This guy, Barry, was one of Richie's best friends, and he was in prison. Wow. For doing drugs or something. Okay. And they let him out on good behavior for a few hours. A few hours. And he is at the sound check. Wow. And he hears me doing this little thing. And I don't think anything about it because I don't know him. I don't know he's there, right? So I'm playing a club a few weeks later on a borrowed drum set because we still didn't get on new equipment. And after the set, a guy comes up to me and he goes, hey, Bobby, hi, my name is Barry. He says, I go, hi, nice to meet you. He goes, he goes I'm a friend of Richie Blackmore's. I go, really? I've been trying to get in touch with him. He goes, great, because he's here and he wants to meet you. Wow. Right? So this is the guy that was, now he's out of prison, you know, totally. But he was at the sound check a few weeks ago, heard me play, told Richie about me. And now I'm playing this club and he takes me in the back and Richie's in the back wanting to talk to me. So... So I told him everything, you know, I said, you know, I've been trying to get in touch with you. And he goes, and I told him about his friend that says, what's in it for me? You know, that wouldn't make the introduction. So Richie never talked to him again. And the first thing Richie said to me is, uh, you know, I really like the way you play. Um, I heard you're up for the gig in Kiss. If you don't get it, I'd like to get together with you and jam. I said, look, I was never, never a Kiss fan but I was always a Deep Purple fan and a Rainbow fan. So I want to get together with you, whether I get the KISS gig or not. And I, I still didn't know if I got the gig because I had just auditioned for them twice out of like 2,000 people. It was me and Eric Carr, you know, and yeah. um, I was on hold. So, But I told Richie I want to get together. So the next day, no, that was a Friday. Um 
I had played there Saturday. The next day was a Sunday. We got together and we jammed and it was, it was just like a, a lot of fun. It was, it was great. You know what I mean? One of the first things he played was the riff to perfect strangers. And and never made it on a rainbow record, but he wound up using it later with when he got back with deep purple. Wow. But, um, yeah. And um, so I still didn't get, you know, you know, but a few days later, I said, what am I doing? I says, I really want to play with rainbow. So I called Richie and I says, hey, Richie, you know, if you still want me, I definitely want to be in the band. He goes, what if Kiss calls? I said, I'll tell him I got a gig. So th that's, that's how I got the rainbow gig. Wow. When you were jamming, were you prepared? Did you play songs like Kill the King, classic songs, you know, or were you just jamming? We were pretty much just jamming, yeah, because it was just me and him, you know. Uh -huh. and he would just play and... Uh, okay. Richie liked to jam. Richie liked to jam. Um, similar to Tony Iommi. Tony Iommi loved to jam, too. They'd like... They, they want to see how you can go on the cuff without yeah. knowing it, you know, because that's the school they're from, and that's where I was from. I like to jam. I love yeah. to create on the spot, you know? Interesting. You know, I remember I was, I think I was around 13 years of age. No, I think actually I was 11 when, when uh, the, the Difficult to Cure album, that was your debut album with Rainbow, right? Yeah. And, and how old were you then when you were tracking that record? Nine. If you were 11, I was nine. Um, <laughs> no, I was, uh, when I joined the band, I was 25. Okay. Did you got your Peist endorsement uh, during that time? Actually, I already had Peisty symbols, but I didn't have an endorsement. Ah. And um, yeah. we were in Sweet Silence Studios. Yep. In Copenhagen. Yep. Recording. And Colin Hart, Rainbow's tour manager, called uh, Peisty and spoke to Bobby Lizer at the time and uh, put me on the phone. And that's how I got uh, the Peisty endorsement. Did you play on your Sonor drums then? Or which, which, what gear did you use in the studio? Do you remember that? Yes, I do. It was the uh, it was the silver sonars. Yeah, with uh, a Radio King snare. What is with two or three rack toms? Two. Okay. I used three for about five minutes, and then I went to to two. Because in the Pisa profiles, you know, it that's says when I first got the kit. I said, "Let me set everything yeah, up." Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, live, I played that set on the first tour. And, okay. and it was, I used to, uh, 13, 14, yeah. 16, 18. And then you started to use a lot of symbols and actually also a gong. Please tell me about it. It was a 50 inch from the beginning, right? No, the first one, the first gong ah. was um, a 40 inch. Yeah. I had uh, the 40 inch gong and um, I always loved gongs. Yeah. I love the way it looked, the sound, the power, you know, I mean, it's, um, the first gong I got was a 40 inch gong from Peisty, uh, symphonic gong. And I used it all through Rainbow and uh, I used it for years. And then when I was in Black Sabbath, the gong started, you know, to get dented. Yeah. You know, because when you're not around, when you're not around, people always want to hit your damn gun and they always hit too hard. They think, you know, cause it's made out of metal. You can kill it, you know? So yeah. I'm sure I didn't dent it that bad. Maybe I did. I don't know. <laughs> I called Peisty and I said, you know, um, 
my gong is a little messed up and um can you fix it and they says yeah we'll send we'll we'll send another gong and we'll see if we fix yours and so i was playing in hamburg germany and and um i think it was axel cole morgan was was is that right Keep around <laughs> with, 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 with Peisty and they came down they brought a, you know a van with a with a gun you know so i walked outside with them you know and uh I said, I said, that gong is bigger than mine. They go, no, it's the same. I go, that gong is mine. And so they took it in and they go, this gong is bigger than yours. They brought a 50. It was actually 52 inches when I had to have a case made for it. And, um, and I was like, wow, I says, that's great. And they go, what, do you like this one? So they gave me the, you know, the, the 50 inch gong, you know, but I couldn't use it because it wouldn't fit on the stand for the 40. Of course. So the next day they came back with, uh, with, with the proper stand and everything. And, uh, I love that. gun. You still have the 51. I still have it. Yeah. And the round gong to round gong stand to it or the square. Excuse me. Do, do, do you have, did you got the round gong stand for it or did you receive this square stand for it? I, I, well, I don't like square stands. <laughs> I like the round stand. I have the round that, stand. Yeah. You know, I had a lot to thank you, Bobby, because, you know, you influenced me so much <laughs> with, 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 as a drummer and with those gongs. So obviously I own a 40 and a 50 inch gong myself. You know, I bought my around 15 inch gong stand when I was 12 years old. So it's thanks to you. You bought a 15 inch gong when you were 12 years old? The stand. I bought the, the stand st first. And I you... got the, <laughs> yeah. And I got the 15 inch gong to 2007. Very nice. They're yeah. beautiful. They're great instruments. They're fantastic. I don't know if you can see, but I have a little gong here. I, I, I can't see it actually, but uh, ah, lovely, lovely. That's a nice one. That's a nice one, that, dear friend. That's a twenty-eight. That was that was a friend of mine's. Yeah. And and he he died, and I hunted it down because I knew he had this gun, and someone had it, and I bought it off them because. It, it's a beautiful sounding little gun, but I have, I have a 38 also. I have a 28, yeah. 38 and, uh, and the 52. Is it okay to have them on tour? Is it much difficulties? Because when it become large, you know, in size, you know, with the wrong gun stands, is it a hard time for the drum tech? So is it, does it work fine? It depends. If you're doing like a real tour, it's, it's, it's not a problem, but it is big. So, but the 38, it's like 38 or 40 is perfect size. It goes anywhere. You know what I mean? It's, uh, once you get to the 50, sometimes like, like if you have a van, the stand won't fit in the, in the, in the van or it, it won't like every once in a while I had to move it in a van and it wouldn't fit in the case. I'd have to take it out of the case to fit, you know? Yeah. But, but they're just so cool. And they're so they're such great musical instruments. It's, it, I mean, if you, you could just sit there and play with the gong and it's, I understand why people use it for therapy and, and, and relaxation and meditation. And not that I'm a meditator, you know, but <laughs> they're great instruments. And, and the, the other thing is you can argue all day long who makes, I mean, to me, Pisces makes the best symbols. Of course. Period. But you can argue who makes the best symbols. You could like this company or that company, but you can't argue who makes the best gongs. Right. Paiste gongs, every symphony orchestra in the world, if they don't have one, they wish they had one. Indeed. That, that is the real deal. That is, you know... There's imitators and copiers and uh, you know, the Wuhan and all that other stuff. 
it's, it's not the same. I agree with you totally there. Bobby. Not the same. I appreciate talking to you. Thank you for being part of the show. And uh, thank you for the stories. And let's keep in touch. All right, brother. Good luck. Cheers. Cheers.